good afternoon everyone uh, thanks for joining to the, the, the today's call uh, on innovating and uh, accelerating your electronic design with solidus pcb and uh, this is gopinath kvnsn and i'm a solution consultant for solidus pcb india and before going to the actual webinar so let me just show you uh, some prerequisites on the webinar um, <clears throat> so when you actually join the webinar you will be seeing this particular window which is actually displaying on my screen um, you will see the you know, the chat window, the questions and answers window. So I request all the participants to you know, uh, add their questions, uh, you know, anything if you have uh, at the end of the session, because we'll be having at least you know, a five to ten minute session uh, you know, at the end of uh, our session for the questions and answers especially. So keep your questions and keep posting your questions and then keep it at the last. Okay, this is about me. Uh, I'm Gopinath. I'm directly from uh, SolidWorks. I have an experience of uh, 18 to 6 experience on, uh, you know, uh, around uh, 13 years in design and manufacturing companies and uh, had been with the SolidWorks community since uh, February 2015. And I had an expertise in SolidWorks PCB and uh, LTM. Okay, so for today's agenda, so let me just take you through the today's agenda. Um, so let me discuss on the design complexities associated with the electronics. Why SolidWorks PCB uh, collaborative approach, you uh, know, which is required, uh, you know, for you to do. And uh, I will, you know, show you a quick SolidWorks PCB product demo and then questions and answers will be there. So if you actually see the, uh, you know, traditionally how the electric, electrical and mechanical integration will be done. You're actually seeing on my screen, on the top of my screen, you will see SolidWorks. That means users who are mechanical users were actually using SolidWorks. On the other side, you are seeing the electrical CAD users who might be using uh, any kind of a tool like SolidWorks PCB or LGM or any other CAD systems. So how the design actually starts? It might be starting from the case design done by the mechanical engineer and it will be exchanging with the uh, electrical CAD designer as a form of about outline. And like an exchange is a DXA for a step file or a DW format to the mechanical designer. The board outline and the constraints will be done at the mechanical side. And again, it reverted back to the electrical CAD designer placement of the components and it went back to the mechanical designer again in the DXA for a step file format to create the 3D board. Comes back for the revised placement. If at all the mechanical designer has suggested some changes in the electrical design, is not you know, agree for that, that will come back and then it will go back to the um, mechanical designer for the, any interference checking. It will come back again for the, you know, uh, the routing and final assembly sessions. So if you actually see, mandatorily there are almost like a six to seven steps. Seven steps of exchanging the information in the real time but in each step in most of the cases most of the customer base they'll be having a number of iterations happening means from the creation of the 3d board to the revised placement there could be three or four number of iterations from the mechanical design team to the electrical design team so the number of iterations are more so this is how the traditionally the electrical mechanical CAD integration takes place most of the times it is a file exchange Okay, I'm coming directly onto the point. What are the typical design challenges on the PCB? Lack of design visibility. What the electrical designer is actually doing it, unless until the electrical designer is communicating back to the mechanical designer through a documented evidence or a, uh, no, through an email, or he has just you know, um, added all these things and then packed it up and then sent it to uh, the mechanical designer, or he has just called him and then over a phone he's communicated to him. He is not able to understand what is the change has been implicated and what is the impact of that change in the electrical will impact on the mechanical side lack of design visibility library component management 60 to 70 percent of the time our designers pcb designers will be searching for the components either you search for the component you customize the component you download from the manufacturing part but the library component management will, will take a significant amount of time from the design designers this is another design challenge Issues with the data import and translations. So, as I already known, traditionally how the MCAD and the ECAD, and mechanical CAD and electrical CAD will be interacting each other. So, when the data is getting exchanged between the platforms, it might be electrical to mechanical, mechanical to electrical. If they are all external files which is getting exchanged, and then which actually leads to a data translation. There could be some missing footprints. There could be some missing data from the mechanical to electrical, or vice versa. PCB board and footprint issues. We all know every PCB has to go inside an enclosure. Every PCB. 
most of the times not mandatorily but most of the times so when it actually goes into i uh, know the the, mecha the mechanical enclosure what comes into the picture there could be you can actually expect there could be some issues with the fitment of uh, now the pcb board there could be chamfer error there could be a uh, you know the whole fitment error there could be um, i know some component has been protruded need to be adjusted in the mechanical cat that is another issue high pin count and package density i know it we know it in the market most of the people actually using the tools which are available there are a lot of tools which are available but when it actually comes to a critical design and we are actually dealing with the critical design of having a number of layers and then a lot of rules and constraints which we need to define on a pcb board and we are operating on a high design pin count and ic's which we are using it or a controllers which are using it or we need to package you know that particular uh, uh, you know the component the high package density how do we actually handle it this answer is another design challenge Electromechanical collaboration. I already told. I mean, when actually design is getting exchanged between the platforms, either mechanical or electrical, team collaboration is is a mandatory thing which is actually missing here. Electromechanical team collaboration, synchronizing the data and exchanging the right data intent in right time or in real time is a design challenge. Obviously, all these uh, you know, above aspects will lead to a quality uh, and then reliability cost will be increasing. The impact on the quality. The reliability will be at stake and the cost will be increasing. Why a SOLIDWORKS PCB is required? SOLIDWORKS PCB is required. As I said, we have seen the, the problems are the challenges in the electronic design. How and then why SOLIDWORKS PCB is addressing these things? So we can actually see the designers who are actually using SOLIDWORKS PCB along with the SOLIDWORKS mechanical CAD can see the design visibility. What electrical designer is adding on his uh, no, PCB platform that can be communicated dynamically and the other guy who's actually sitting in a different place, different country altogether, he can see and visible changes and he can communicate back to the mechanical and then electrical team in real time. It will reduce the number of iterations. And has the libraries in data management. Users on SOLIDWORKS PCB don't need to search most of the components on the internet or they don't need to customize more of course you can customize it but most of the data the libraries which are available is a part of sort of pcb package you can also map with the database analysis so sort of pcb accommodates links the database in terms of an excel file if you have a database created an excel file or if you have a database in ms axis dot mdb file format so any of these kind of formats can be linked together so that your existing database on the component parameters can be linked together with your SOLIDWORKS PCB solution. Why SOLIDWORKS PCB is required on the native file exchange? We have just seen the design intent between the teams is being communicated to an external file. Using SOLIDWORKS PCB, we can exchange this file format without having any external file exchange. We are just all the file exchange is native to the environment. You are not going to generate any file and then give it to the mechanical or mechanical guy is actually done some changes and then giving back to you. No, no such kind of an exchange of files entertained in SOLIDWORKS PC. It's a native file exchange where the users inside SOLIDWORKS PC can push and then pull the data inside. Most of the times, as I know, designers when they are actually defining the shape of the board. They need to take a concurrence from the mechanical designers or the mechanical team members because the board has to fit ultimately it has to fit and go inside the the mechanical enclosure so mechanical constraining is actually leading in this place so using sort of pcb you can actually define the board from the ecad from the mcad and then exchange with the electrical guy when it comes to the component of footprints and the necklace SOLIDWORKS PCB accommodates IPC compliant footprints. As you many of you know, IPC stands for the Institute of Printed Circuits. It's a standard every PCB uh, company or the software vendor mandatorily should have this particular tool with them. And SOLIDWORKS PCB do have this. IPC compliant footprint and the necklace can be generated using SOLIDWORKS PCB. 
it can be a component like VGA, it can be a component like a bumper part clap back, or it can be a component like a land grid array. You might be creating a component like a plastic quad uh, flat pack. So any kind of such components with a high pin count can be managed using Solidus PC. When it comes to the collaboration, real-time synchronization between the platforms, I just now discussed in the previous slide about the the problems are in issues when I, when the files are getting exchanged externally. When I generate in a different file format or DXF, DWG format and then give it to the uh, the other guy and then he gives it back to me in a step file, they're associated some data translation errors or it will take a longer time to map the components. We know that if you have a components of maybe 10 components, you can easily exchange and they do it. Let us imagine if you have a component of uh, maybe 800 to 900 or 1000 components. And you have eight number of layers or ten number of layers, and all these you know, thousand components, very complex code, which you are actually dealing with. Mapping the three D components on in the mechanical CAD, whichever the mechanical CAD you are using, is actually a tedious and then error prone, very tedious process. So real time collaboration, ECAD and CAD collaboration ensures in SolidWorks PCB the dynamic integration of uh, the electrical and then mechanical CAD of exchange of information. And all these above, uh, you know, points will obviously lead us to a better quality, reliability, and then cost-effective solution using SolidWorks PCB. Okay, so let me explain on uh, SolidWorks PCB workflow. How does the SolidWorks PCB build work? Basically, so we have um, schematic design. The users who are actually using SolidWorks PCB can do the schematic design in a single package. They can also do the, you know, to a PCB layout. They can also visualize their board in the 3D visualization. We call it as a 3D mode. And we can exchange this information in a native file exchange format with the mechanical CAD, SOLIDWORKS mechanical CAD, 3D CAD, dynamically and collaborate well. This is how the workflow between SOLIDWORKS and SOLIDWORKS PCB with the help of our collaborative server called SOLIDWORKS PCB services. It's basically a collaborative server which pulls in and then pushes the data between these two platforms, the mechanical and electrical CAD systems. Okay, so without wasting much time, probably I will jump on to the product demonstration. And before that, let me just ask a, a question, the poll question to the participants. So let me just launch one poll question here. I'm going to launch the poll question. Probably I request all the participants to vote for this. Is ECAD and CAD collaboration is critical for your business needs? I mean, when you're actually making your uh, no electrical and mechanical CAD collaboration, is it critical for you? Maybe another 30 seconds, probably I will close the poll. I request all the participants because it actually puts us in a realistic picture that you know, where exactly how you are actually operating and how do we help you with our solution. Okay, I'm just uh, launching, I mean, uh, sharing this question, the answers to you. So almost like 50% says yes and 50% says no. Thank you for your answers. So let me just make it here. I will just hide this. Okay, so let me just go ahead with the you know, other sessions. I hope you are able to see my screen because I have just, okay, right. Okay, so in the design workflow, what you were going to see. So you're going to see the ECAD and CAD collaboration, defining the layout from the MCAD and the seamless collaboration on this. So we have basically the four segments. One is ECAD and MCAD collaboration, the schematic library management, PCB routes and constraint editor, and the fabrication outputs. So we'll be ending our session with the fabrication outputs. Let me just go to the schematic. I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Okay. <clears throat> So this is a project, this is the user interface of SOLIDWORKS PCB, wherein you are actually seeing the graphical interface of SOLIDWORKS PCB with the relevant circuit elements and then graphical information, the libraries, and then other aspects to complete your schematic PCB layout and the uh, no, basic circuit simulation design. Right? So, yeah.
Hello, am I audible? Okay, so I think I'm audible. Uh, there was some disturbance, I think. Uh, apologies for that. So this is the user interface of Solidus 3 CD, and then you are actually seeing on my screen um, the graphical interface of Solidus 3 CD. And uh, to, to make this particular schematic, you need a circuit element. So you have got all the circuit elements included in the power ports and uh, the buses, bus entry, and then required ports and then wiring. The part information you can easily add any part. I uh, know using the component, you can choose a part. Know, from the list of the libraries and then add and add the part into you know the required configuration you can actually bring in the part add the part over here and then associate the part into the uh, you know, for the mechanical domain also so what i'll do is i'm going to add a couple of parts here so let me just load the libraries so for starting off our uh, new discussion libraries is a heart of the you know electrical or electronics so let me just check for the, the required libraries here. So we have more than like a three GB of libraries with the required manufacturers, uh, now including the linear integrated circuits or analog devices or Panasonic or my ST microelectronics or DigiKey or uh, no Mouser electronics, or Xilinx. So all these major manufacturers database, which is available as a library information in SolidWorks PCB. So. If, if I wanted to load the libraries, I can go here and then load the libraries, whichever is required. So I have already added uh, you know, some amplifiers, the discrete libraries, video amplifier libraries from the analog devices like that. So if I have any more libraries which I wanted to add, I can go and then insert from the file, from the libraries, you know, which is uh, part of my D drive or C drive. You can actually see in, on my screen. These are the libraries which I'm not just loaded because whenever I want, I can just load it. From my D drive or a C drive, it's up to the system configuration and uh, no, uh, the loading capabilities. So you can actually see the 4D systems alphabetically it has been arranged: Infinia, Holtec Semiconductor, Legacy, Lattice Semiconductor, Microchip, MicroSemi, NHP Semiconductor. These are all the major manufacturers which normally, I uh, know, the PCB designers are the users, the companies most uh, most of the time they'll be pre preferring. So on semiconductors, Panasonic, Rosenberg, Samtec. Uh, Wade Miller, Texas Instruments, ST Microelectronics, Xilinx, Wurth Electrotechnics. So likewise, so we have got uh, no more than a 3 GB or 4 GB of data which is readily available and it's keep updating. It's keep updating based on the data availability form of the development. All right, if once the required libraries has been loaded, let me just load the library. So, so we have basically three libraries. One is schematic library, PCB library, and we also have the 3D library associated with it. Because when we are actually dealing with the mechanical CAD, yes, 3D library is also equally important. It has to be the 3D model has to be embedded inside the schematic library also. Okay, so what I'll do is uh, so I can easily add a part. So wherever I wanted to have, I can add the part here. And if you wanted to add, I don't know any of the other components. Let me just add the D Scott key diode. Yeah. So let me just add the you know, Scott key diode over here. Also, let me just add this particular configuration. Okay. So I'm, I have just added in a couple of components. It's the same question. I mean, if you wanted to add any other component like ICs, uh, microcontrollers, anything, if you can easily add and then connect with your circuit based on the logic which you're actually driving it, it's very easy to add these components to the existing circuit wherever you wanted to have it. Currently, I'm just showing how easy you can add and then run the wires on the circuit, right? So I've just added a couple of components. It's not a big thing when your components are there in the library, you can just drag and drop onto this. And then there is one more interesting thing. You can actually create the libraries also probably even time permits. I will be coming back and then showing you how to create the, the symbol libraries and the PCB footprint library also as well using Solidus, um, no PCB. Okay, so I have just added you know, a couple of uh, components let me just save on this configuration you can compile this particular schematic you can set the rules and you know other aspects of it um basically you can go to the project options and then you have various rules associated with it violations associated with the documents violations associated with the harnesses violations associated with the nets likewise other nets and then parameters we also do have a connection matrix where you can set a parameter here whether that parameter or a rule can be a a rule which is which can be neglected 
which can be taken care immediately which has to be rushed and then you know fix it like a fatal error error or you can neglect that particular thing. so all these things you can actually set it in the using connection matrix and then error reporting and then other classification generations so you can compile these and then find out the errors based on these things and then go ahead on this so let me just go to you know the pcb cad so once i have done the schematic let me just go back to the schematic again because i have added two components i have just saved it what is the next subsequent option is i need to annotate it and we're just going and then annotating the schematics so there is a specific pattern in uh, associated with the solidus pcb where based on the the component placed on your schematic if the component placed on the you know from it is started from the left right and then down to the extreme right then you can choose this part if you choose this pattern the components place will be numbered like this if you choose across and down the pattern will be changed it all depends on how you actually placed it and then order of processing how you are deciding okay let me just say that how many changes accept the changes i'm going to accept the changes execute the changes say okay close it so the the component has been numbered here right so let me just save on this particular configuration i've added the component and then uh, the engineering change order have added this component validated changes and then executed the changes i can you know very well dump this particular you uh, know all the translate all the data which i have created using schematic onto the pcb layout this is a pcb layout this is a basic pcb layout you can always you know go here and uh, modify the board shape so if you wanted to modify the board shape imagine that i wanted to do it in this fashion i wanted to give a chamber of 45 degrees on my pcb board i wanted to design like this you can always do it and then you can also give a dimension for this particular uh, you know pcb board wherever you want it if i wanted to give it from here you can always do this particular these things on this and you can always change this particular configuration also currently i'm just checking onto the metric configuration so you can actually see it if you double click it the dimensional configurations you can see it i can make it as in millimeters right and say okay on this automatically the dimension will be converted so you can actually add you know these particular dimensions onto this wherever you wanted to have it for your manufacturing drawing if you wanted to produce a manufacturing drawing finally you can always do this so what i'll do is i will just close this library portion and i'm going to switch on the pcb connector let me just check as an electrical designer i've done something i've added the schematic and then uh, i'm trying to refine the board shape i've done to some extent i wanted to exchange this information to the mechanical cat so let me just push to the mechanical cat designer i say that board profile defined please check and let me know your comments so he's actually not sending any external information this is all internal to the tool what he's actually supposing to do he's actually doing it internal to the tool he has written something he has sent it to the mechanical team let me see what is the role of a mechanical designer here and what he's supposed to do how is actually this particular board is appearing here what are the changes he's going to do on this board and how it is going to be reflected back to the electrical designers uh no oh, environment that's what you're going to see now okay so this is solid mechanical this is 3d mechanical cad having an add-in pcb add-in to extract communicate the information from solidworks pcb that is pcb2 right so this is the pcb add-in from the mechanical i'm going to pull the board so let me just identify so how does it basically act as i said there's a collaborative server basically it communicates back and forth the information from the mechanical to the electrical, electrical to mechanical vice versa right so what is the project which i have created i have created a project project sample project pcb sample project april 2020 that is the project name so the mechanical designer wherever he sits in irrespective of the location it might be a case where mechanical designer uh, the product designer who's actually sitting at in us and the electrical designer the pcb designer is sitting in india doesn't matter they can communicate well through a server-based configuration through an internet through a server-based configuration they can communicate right okay so let me just open the same project which i'm seeing it here so i'm going to open this and save this particular assembly 
onto my you know, current and uh, my desktop in the new PCB folder. I have a PCB demo folder and I'm going to save this. So I'm saving this particular PCB board, which is being shared by the electrical designer to the mechanical designer, right? Okay, so I've got the same shape. If you actually see it, I've got the same shape of the board with the actual dimensions. Please, please note here, the electrical designer is not given any document to me to refer. He has just sent that information. He has just pushed this information. And the electrical design, the mechanical design is able to see everything. Right. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to bring. Now I can't decide anything. The mechanical designer you know, can make the, the changes to this. So he can edit the sketch. He can modify the sketch. Right. And he can refine it, add the curvatures, add the bend radiuses, all the things which he wanted to do, he can do it. But that's not the intention. Our intention is very clear, and uh, that is what I'm going to show you. I'm going to the insert components. I'm going to bring the electronic casing in which the PCB board is going to fit in. I'm going to the desktop again. I have a new folder where I kept inside the PCB demo. There is one PCB board and assembly. So I'm going to bring it this. So I'm going to bring this particular enclosure. Enclosure can be anything. Enclosure can be anything. It can be, you know, kind of a this shape or it can be very critical shape. It can be, uh, you know, kind of an electronic doll which you are actually making it. It can be a drone, right, on which the PCB board is going to sit in. It doesn't matter. Once the the, uh, the, uh, the enclosure has become a part of a solid world, so we can actually make the change. We can define the 3D sketch inside. We can define the profile inside, and the PC board can fit in inside, right? Okay. So, so for this electronic enclosure, let me just hide the top cover at this moment. I'm going to hide this particular thing. I'm going to make this particular component here. I'm going to make it. Let me just say okay on this. Let me bring where it is. So this is the board has been mated somewhere here, right? What I'll do is I'm going to edit it. As I said, if I want to edit, I can always do edit and then I can pick up the three points arc and you know, um, add the required configurations onto this. But I'm not going to do those things. I'm going to remove this. And I have a board profile, a 3D sketch, which has already been defined as following with a enclosure shape. See, basically, what I'm trying to convey you is the board has to take the shape of this particular enclosure where you can see the curvy kind of enclosure, bend radiuses are there, arc bends are there, where it is difficult for the electrical or an electronic designer to define this using a PCB tool. You can do it to a certain extent, but not with an accuracy of if I wanted to have a 2.32 degrees of a, no bend radius which I wanted to have. It is little difficult for many of the tools in the market, right? So that's a thing which I'm trying to show. So once I click on the board profile and then go to the convert entities. So this is the feature in SOLIDWORKS uh, mechanical CAD. So I've got the required board shape defined as for that. This is the board which is required by the electronic designer. What I'll do is I'm going to save this particular thing board and I'm going to exchange with the electrical designer saying that hey the board which you have sent is not acceptable, which is which has to you know, transform a lot. So I have modified as per my mechanical constraining. Here is the board. Please consider and then add your components onto it. That's what the mechanical design is communicating back. So he will say that board shape defined and please check and revert. Right? He's actually communicating back to the, the electrical designer. Let us see what happens to the electrical designer there. So he has got the information here. The moment he pushes, please note, I'm once again telling, there is no external file is getting exchanged. I did not went anywhere to input anything or output in. I've not exported anything. I've not imported anything. It is just a, a push from the electrical to the mechanical, mechanical to the electrical, right? So I'm going to view the changes. I have two components now. One is a board. Second one is a PCB assembly so currently i'm not checking this in only the pcb board i'm checking in i'll say okay on this so i've got the board shape whichever i wanted to have now i can define 
the origin here this is the required board shape so this is the same board shape which is the mechanical designer defined in the given determinant. now i have no issues as an electrical engineer i have no issues just add the components and place the components and then proceed with your routing and other incident and then communicate back to the mechanical design right so what i'll do is i'm going to import the changes so going to validate the changes execute the changes so this is an engineering change order as you all know major up to you know that any small or big component which are any change on the track or on the component which actually records to a engineering change order right so currently the engineering change order with a lot of components is being added to it so let us see you can also see if some of the component doesn't have the footprints those components also you can see it had failed to add the footprints to that component basically this, this is the kind of an analysis where we can go back and check that which are the components having a footprint which of component doesn't have a footprint and you can add the footprints also to the component which doesn't have it so i'll say okay on this so i have all the components inside this i will just quickly arrange these particular components in in, in the runner fashion so let me just arrange these particular components I mean, as a designer, you might be knowing uh, now that know where exactly these components need to be positioned and placed because you have a logic to you know place the components. So in the similar fashion, you can uh, know add the components, rotate the components, and you no know, place the components in a required position. And then if you feel that yes, these are the component positions, I I can fix these components now. That time you can always fix the components, right? So I'm just slowly doing it. Let me just add these components here. And I wanted to add these components to the bottom layer. Let me just bring it to the bottom layer here and bring the another set of components. You can always adjust this component because rotating the component just with a space bar doesn't take much time for us. Right? So I'm just adding these components also here. Let me just bring all these things onto the, uh, the PCB layout first. Then you can arrange these components whichever the fashion, the way you want to have. Let me just zoom off. So I've got all the components. Let me just quickly arrange all oh, these components. And these are the components where I have a lot of uh, no, uh, rubber bands which is being associated with it, right? So I can add these components, move these components wherever I want to have it. So let me just add these components also in a vertical fashion and uh, let these be in a horizontal fashion. Let me bring it here. I can easily rotate the component. You can actually see it. This component, if you wanted to rotate with the space bar, you can easily rotate the component. At any time, if I wanted to push the components at the back layer, I mean the bottom layer, so I can easily push it back. Was it really gone to the back layer? Yes, it went to the bottom layer. As you can see, these things here. Once I adjust this, probably I will show you how to go to the, the other layers and the add it. So it went on to the top layer. So let me just add this in here. And these particular components somewhere. Right? I've got you know um, arranged in some of the components on this. I can also add just this particular uh, the three resistors, make it as a strike. Wanted to bring this particular U1. U1 is having a lot of connections. Let me just bring this U1, place it so that it can be let me just rotate and then add it here right okay so i have pretty much done with the you know, placement of the components if we wanted to push it in the back layer bottom layer or any other layers i can still do it so when it comes to the layers so let me just see what are the different layers which is part of solidworks pcb okay so uh, before going to the next stage so let me just yeah launch one more question poll question i'm just launching the one more poll question so this question says searching and adding components in the design is challenge for you or you have a uh, very well suited uh, the collaborative tool a searching tool which can go and then search for it searching and adding component in design is a challenge for you this is a question So I request all the participants to vote for this. Okay, I'm going to you know, share the results. 
I mean, 50% of the people says yes and 50% says no. So I'm just hiding these poll results here. Okay, so, so let me show you. So I've just added these components and arranged these components. Let me just arrange this in a typical fashion. It's very easy to arrange these components also, pushing them fully, the information here. Let me just add these a little bit somewhere here, right? Okay, so what are the different layers just associated? These are the view configurations where you can see the signal layers here, internal plane layers. And uh, currently, I have not added any internal plane layers. If I have added, then the, those layers will be visible with the color configurations here. Similarly, the mechanical layers. I mean, if you want to see actually the, how many mechanical layers are there, you can actually uncheck this box. You can see 32 mechanical layers you can do it. Similarly, you can also add, I mean, the users of Solid Specific can also add 32 signal layers and 32 mechanical layers and 16 internal plane layers are associated with it. Okay, so uh, I mean, these are the you know other layers, like the mask layers, other layers, similar to the mechanical layers. I mean, the, the system color layers, which are there. Silk screen layers also, you can actually see it here. If you wanted to change any uh, you know, layer colors and all, you can always do this from here, right? So this is about the view configuration. The same layer configuration, which you can see it in the layer stack manager. This is a layer stack manager for SOLIDWORKS PCB. You can actually see the presetting of the layers. So if I wanted to have a four layer board, imagine that I have two signal and then two plane layers. So I can always click this so that all the, the default four layer board with the dielectrics automatically added onto the signal, I mean the layer stack will be coming here. And you have, the user have a privilege to change the dielectric configuration, dielectric constants based on your manufacturing details. If the, your manufacturer says that, okay, this is what you need to do it, you can always come back here and change it. If your dielectric is not FR4, if it is something else, you can always change it. If the thickness is not this, you wanted to change it to 0.3 to 2.5, based on your requirement, you can always edit this based on your manufacturability. Your PCB board manufacturability, you can customize these details. Similarly, if you wanted to add any uh, no, layers, the internal plane layers, all these, you can add it into this. You can also add, you can also add the flexible PCB. You can add a flexible PCB using this advanced option. So you can name this as a rigid board, rigid one, I can say, right? And this has been named, I'm going to add a stack. I'll say that flexible board, right? And I can add one more layer, rigid two. And on the flexible board, I can reduce the number of you know, layers because we know that in the uh, you know, flexible board, we will not be having the similar layer configuration as we see it in the, the rigid board configuration. So you can see it when I'm actually uh, configuring the flexible board, the required layers is getting disappeared or added to them onto this. So this is how you can actually define your layer stack, whether if it is a, a preset need to be there. And one more thing here, you can also save your uh, you know, define the configuration and you can reload it again. Imagine that I have a product which I've already done and the layer configuration has already been defined and I wanted to bring it back. That layer configuration for a different project, you can always do it. You can save this configuration, you can load this configuration from wherever you have saved that particular layer configuration and load it for a new project and start using it. So it's very customizable and it's reusable configurations can be defined using SOLIDWORKS PCB. So let me just save this configuration. Let me show you how it is actually visualized in 3D visualization using SOLIDWORKS PCB. So you can actually see, I have pushed back you know, some components and I was having a doubt that whether the components have been pushed back correctly or not. Yes, all these components, even if you remember, I was just mentioning U1 here, right? So all these components have been pushed back correctly from the top layer, right? So it's very easy to see at the same time. You can also move and then see the component. If at all any collision is there, you can see this is 0.091 mm collision is there and the color configuration, the color combination has been changed, indicating that there is a collision, there is an interference. If accidentally we were not knowing and then we have uh, you know, brought in another component very nearby, which we are not able to notice in 2D PCB layout, wherein the 3D visualization can tell us about 
the interference between the components. Right. So I have pretty much done on uh, you no know, on, on the 2D side. So let me just push it back to the to 3D and see that whether these components are okay to be positioned, fixed, and do the routing. Right. Okay. So what I'll do is I say that components positioned. Please check for interference or any other constraints. So this is an instruction which is being given to the mechanical designer because i was not able to visualize the interference of the components positioned on the pcb board with the inclusion currently right so for that purpose the electronic designer must know that yes is there any interference can i fix this component at this position for that you need a concurrence from the mechanical designer saying that yes you can fix the component here you can do the routing or whatever it is i am very clear on my mechanical constraining go ahead with your electronic uh you know um, routing and then other tools right right so he has uh, positioned the components and then given back to the mechanical designer what is that he's actually doing it let me see what the electrical designer has given so a lot of components have been given let me so I have a privilege as a mechanical designer. I have a privilege to check all the parts or check whichever I require. This is not mandated that you can check all the parts and then you, you know, uh, uh, you will be in a problem. So let me just accept these changes. So once you actually accept the changes, you can actually see applying the changes process copper changes and everything and board will be flooded with the components based on the component position by the electrical designer all the components will come and then sit on your the mechanical pcb board why it is required it is required to check if at all any component need to be repositioned in the electrical domain imagine that you have not communicated these things and then uh, maybe it has been identified at the last moment what will happen the board has to be refined it it has to be returned back because those changes are not interpreted once it has been routed all the component position fixed routed and the board has come for the fitment inside the enclosure and there is a problem you need to replace the board and it is very it is not cost effective it is not at all cost effective it will actually increase the project cost the quality and you'll be obviously missing the deadlines also now you're actually seeing all the required components which are you know tend to be positioned on respective positions based on the electrical designer has been positioned onto this right okay so while it is actually positioning automatically the mechanical tool so let me just go back to the pcb and show you some you know important uh, things in this so i've just shown you on the layer stack manager and all so we can also add the assembly test points or a fabrication test points on the PCB board, right? So we know that in the, in the PCB board, when we are actually, you know, adding it, let me just come back to the 3D. Yes, I have got the PCB board back onto the mechanical domain with the items required. What is that I'm going to do? So let me bring my top cover of this particular thing, the top lid of this particular assembly. Let me just show the top lid. So when I bring it back, the top lid, we know that any enclosure has to be closed most of the times, right? So when I when when I bring the, the top lid, the upper lid of this particular enclosure, there is an interference here. All the three places, there is an interference. What I'll do is I will just fix this particular enclosure first. And so this has to be fixed. This need to be mated somewhere here. So what I'll do is I will just make this particular configuration. Similarly, I need to do the same similar kind of a change on three different configurations, right? So similarly here, I need to make this as a board. So now I have mated these things and then fixed certain configurations here. Let me just hide this. These things have been moved. Now the decals have not been moved. Don't worry. The decals will be getting moved once it is acceptable to the the changes have been accepted to the electrical designer also then he sends it back again saying that yes your positioning of the components everything is okay for me and then i'm going ahead you can also go ahead then the decals and everything will be getting connected it takes one complete cycle to go back and then come back again here 
okay so let me also you know clearly tell i was just wanted to give the space constraint you know i just wanted to push in this particular ic into the bottom layer so i can flip this ic to the bottom layer with a click out button all these vehicles as i said will be moving once this one cycle has been completed similarly my board has to take out a hole here correct it is actually overlapped there should be one hole here for this particular board so that this it can be screwed and then fitted to this particular enclosure but currently it is actually interfering with this which the electrical engineer might not be knowing it so what i'll do is i will just open this particular board add a couple of holes on this i'm going to the sketch mode so i'm going to add a 2 mm hole onto this i'll say okay on this so this sketch has been identified as sketch number 12 right so and i will save this configuration right so i have added two holes here so let me just make a cutout on this sketch 12 i'm going here and then editing the sketch once this part is over probably i'm going to show some interesting you know facts in the pcb side as well i'm currently on to the the collaboration side so let me just add this particular thing and made with the the whole of this particular right so i'm going to say okay on this you can actually you know do a cutout also on this so currently i have not done the cutout let me just do the cutout also on this i'm going to the editing mode again i forgot to do the cutout there so i'm going to the features and i'll do the extrude cutout so you can define the depth and at what depth you wanted to give this cutout to this right now you can actually see the cutout has been made on the board now you communicate back to the the electrical designer i'll just save this configuration and i'll say that push components reposition what has been repositioned you can actually give this reference j1 j2 j3 have been j1 to j3 repositioned and couple couple of cutouts added and u3 u3 has been moved to bottom layer i mean you can give the instructions you can give the right design intent the coming back to the the electrical designer so let me come back here so these are the same changes so let me view the same message what he has actually given it and you can actually see let me just show you the visualization j3 j3 has been moved like that and you can also see j2 has been moved like this and j1 is a component which has been moved this was the position this is the position the current position for this okay so let me just accept all these changes accept the changes so once i accept the changes now i have added the enclosure also just to see that i'm going to the 3d visualization mode now you can see in solidworks pcb tool itself you can see the enclosure also along with it but why the enclosure is you know still showing the red color because you can see the button the push buttons which you are actually seeing it having a minute interference with the top plate 0.074 there's a collision here also very small interference but interference is interference whether it's a small or a big interference interference the tool can detect that you can also see along with the enclosure the components placed inside the particular enclosure in pcb tool also please note this particular enclosure i have not inserted in pcb tool this has been brought in in the mechanical CAD and been pushed to the electrical CAD designs, right? So that's how that is the advantage of you know, SOLIDWORKS PCB. So currently, I don't want this enclosure at this moment. The enclosure is basically a 3D body. You can include the 3D body, you can embed the 3D model, you can link to the 3D model, you can convert as a cylindrical or a sphere shape and then add it to your modeling structure. So currently, I don't require this. I'll just remove it. 
and then go ahead with the routing process. So how do I do the routing? So I have uh, three types of routing, interactive routing, differential pair routing, and then interactive multiplayer routing. So before doing the routing, as we all know, we need to go and then see the uh, design rules. So what are the different design rules which we have? So we have a routing rules to define the routing widths. We have the electrical rules on the clearance, short circuit, unrouted nets and all. We have routing rules to define the width, the layers, priority. We also have a wire styles to define the wire, the internal diameter wire and the outer diameter of the whole size and all. We also have a fan out control. We have the differential pair routing. If you have a differential pairs to reduce the common mode noise in most of the you know, transmitting and receiving uh, stations, they'll be using the differential pair routing to avoid the common mode noise. Differential pair routing rules can be defined here. You can uh, you know, add a new rule of your own. Assembly layers, mask layers, test point layers. Even you can define the assembly test points. And we know that assembly test points, we have a fabrication test points also in our um, you know, PCB size. So most of the companies will be preferably having uh, the assembly test points as well as the fabrication test points also. So how do you actually uh, you know, set the assembly and then fabrication test points? So for every, you know, these kind of things, you actually need to have the fabrication test point style need to be defined. How the fabrication test points you know, can be defined. So using Solidus PCB, you can define the fabrication test points in this particular window. You can also define an advanced query or a new rule for your fabrication test points, wherein the minimum, maximum, and the preferred size, the, uh, the wire sizes can be defined for this. All right? So I will also show you that you now how you can actually set the wire, uh, you know, for a wire, the fabrication and the assembly test points. Set. Whether you want to define this on the top layer or the bottom layer, it is always better to have the fabrication and the assembly test points at the either top or the bottom layer because we know that the, there will be a fixture wherein the i mean the the test fixture basically and which this pcb body is going to fix in and the test fixture basically test the points either it need to test it on the bottom or at the top what happens if you have a fixture it will test the both sides it can you can have it but the cost of that big fixture to test the both top and then bottom layers uh if you have a board which is having the top and bottom test points is very cost it's not cost effective so it's always better suggestible to the customers have the allowed side of the test points on the either top or a bottom so that you can actually reduce the cost of the test fixtures on your this thing so you can always say that use the grid and uh, you know you can have the preferred width Right, the whole size also you can actually define for a particular uh, no wire which we are actually defining it for the test point wires, right? And you can allow the test points under the component, and you are actually defining at bottom only. You are not defining the top and bottom. Similarly, you can also define these things in the assembly test point usage also. Let me click on the assembly test points. You can also do it on the test bottom side. You can define the use grid and allow the test points under the component. So once you have fixed all these things, once you generate the test points report in the fabrication, assembly test point report in the fabrication as per IPC DV56A. So this is a specific standard when your board has to manufacture and then test it as per the assembly test points, as per the IPC standard, your tool like SOLIDUS PCB should accommodate this particular standard, right? So similarly, you can uh, no, uh, give the manufacturing uh, relevant uh, uh, configurations annual ring and then whole sizes and other things placement of the component the component clearances also you can define it you can define a specific rule for the no, width criteria also for width for a specific net if you wanted to you know define any specific net you can go to the advanced query you can add belongs to a net imagine that i wanted to define for a ground layer right so for for ground i wanted to define as Maybe point three. Let me just give it as a point three preferred width. So I'm going to define this here as point three here, right? You can apply. So rest all other widths are point two five four, and my ground width, the ground layer width is going to be. Let me just rename this as. Give me a second. I'm going to add this as point two five four. 
and this also 0.254 and this also 0.254 let me just apply and i'm going to define a new width here so in this width the new width let me add the ground layer here right i'm going to add the ground layer on the ground layer i'm going to define 0 0.3 0 0.3 similarly point three here so i can define the preferred width minimum width and the maximum width on these uh, no, three layers and i can apply this similarly you can customize these things on the pcb rules and constraint editor and then respect to your uh, particular pcb board you can add it onto this i've defined this pretty much defined these things okay i won't take much much time maybe another 10 minutes probably we are going to conclude the session Right, I have defined uh, uh, no, the, the rules which is required. So I can always go and then define any classes which is required for my uh, no, particular PCB board. You can define a classes in the net class, you can define component classes, you can define the layer classes, you can define plaid classes, you can define polygon classes, you can define, uh, you can also define the polygon coding for a particular layer using the polygon you know, manager for a selected polygon right or you can define from the board outline you can do it probably at the end of the session if time permits i will show you on this so i was also talking about the wire when i place it on the assembly test points how do i actually see it the wires can be placed in between the layers there are configurations like the buried wires the blind wires the through hole wires right so these kind of the configurations you can ma uh, match it based on the layers which you have currently i have only two layers Imagine that if you have a 10 layers and you wanted to place a wire between the layers, maybe layer number three and the layer number four, those layer configurations you can select it here. The start layer can be layer number three and then stop layer can be layer number four. So that is going to be buried wire. So all these different kinds of a uh, wire configurations can be defined using SOLIDWORKS PCB. Similarly, I was discussing about the fabrication and then assembly test points. So on the wires, if you have actually added the wire on a particular test point as a test point you can define it if you remember in the pcb rules i have defined this as a bottom layer on the bottom layer so similarly i can define this test, test points and i can place it once i you know run the pcb routing i can place this particular wire on that right right so let me just go to the interactive routing so how do you actually do the interactive routing so I can click on this. I can go to the wherever I wanted to have connected this particular thing and then connect it. This is basically an interactive routing. So let me just go here, pick that particular point. Let me come back. And then you can actually see how much length this particular net has been added into you know, this particular configuration. You can see it on the board. It is actually 43.157 in, in mm has been added so this is an interactive routing so we can actually route the, the different uh, uh, the components between the components also we can route it so what type of a different routing we can do we can route it on the component we can route it in the component class we can do the routing selected and selected components if i just wanted to see that there is a complex you uh, know um, components which has been placed on my pcb board i wanted to see that how the routing can be done only on this particular ic there are n number of components nearby the IC. You can also do a selective component connections between the components also. At the same time, you can also do the auto routing, right? So let me just select this, remove it, this particular configuration, delete, tab, delete. Yeah. Now what I'll do is I'm going to use the auto route option, select it. I'm going to select the default two layer board. I say, I mean, you can always say that lock all the pre routes, all the prerequisite routes. If you wanted to lock it, you can always do it. Let me say OK on this, and then auto routing will be started. Once the component plays and the routing has been done, you wanted to see that how the board will look like, as well as we wanted to do as some kind of a copper analysis, you can do it in the 3D. You can push it back to the 3D environment. And the mechanical guy can subject the output of a SOLIDWORKS PCB and subject into a SOLIDWORKS simulation to do a further thermal analysis. Right? So now it is actually all the routing and everything is happening. So let us go back to the, the PPT. So what we have seen here is the ECAD MCAD collaboration. 
right? And this is the collaborative window between the component when we exchange the PCB connector. Library management, symbol wizard, supply link, very important thing. Probably I will just show it to you. Database management. And if time permits, we will see the symbol wizard. How do you actually create a components? Let me just show you that one also. Uh, create the footprints, supplier links, PCB rules and constraint editor. Just now I have uh, spoken about design rules. This is what we have seen. Component clearances, and then we, we will end up with a bilometer and then fabrication outputs. So let me come back. So it's, it's pretty much done on uh, the most of the stuff here. Let me just, by the time it actually happens, so let me just go back to the, the schematic side and show you some interesting uh, no thing on the supplier lines. Imagine that this is a component which I have used. This is a, a controller which I have uh, no, used. How do I know that whether this component is available with the supplier of this particular component? How do I know? So there is a feature, there is a functionality in SolidWorks PCB which checks for component availability if you are connected to an internet for a specific vendor or a supplier, whether this component is available or not, it will quickly check. Let me just show you how when you actually have a component having the manufacturing part like this, whether it is available for a suitable supplier or not. I'm directly connected to the internet and then searching for this component to an available suppliers. So you can actually see now this is the manufacturing part and this is a supplier. These are the suppliers. Manufacturing is Texas Instruments. You can see there is no change on that and the suppliers might be changing. There could be an Avonet who is actually supplying the same manufacturing part. There could be Chipan stock. There could be RS components. And each each manufacturer, when I'm clicking, you can actually see at the downside the specification part of it. When I click on RS components for this particular runner supplier, you can see the specifications. What are the maximum charging current, operating temperature, and all other aspects of it. And you can also see the documents. This is the data sheet which is associated with it. Right? This is a single input, single cell, lithium ion, lithium poly battery charger. The battery charger data sheet. So this is online which is available. So the advantage of using a supplier links is we can see the availability. Whether it is available or not, you can see at the bottom of my screen. Yes, stock is available. It's in the Great Britain prompts. Right? So supplier links actually help us help the designers companies to evaluate whether the component is available with the supplier or not on time in real time. Okay, so uh, you can also grab from the supplier links all the parameters also you can copy from the internet also. That is also can be possible. Let me go back here. Yeah, so most of the stuff has been done. So there are some critical uh, tracks need to be routed that can be done manually So this is this is how you can actually do the routing automatic routing interactive routing using SOLIDWORKS PCB So some interesting facts on the routing length calculations. So let me just show you If you just wanted to match the routing length Route length How do you actually do to avoid the common more noise? We need to maintain if a power supply which is having the plus minus and then both the you know, tracks having should be having the, the correct length right so how do we actually do this so let me just go and then show you how the route length matching can be executed using SOLIDWORKS PCB so I am in the interactive routing I can go to the interactive length tuning this is also another parameter in SOLIDWORKS PCB so I can define from the length for a particular uh, no, uh, net for c1 i'm going to give a minimum and the maximum round length is 200 i can say okay and then say okay on this you can actually see the 200 mm which is being displayed on this all right and the moment it is actually you can actually increase the amplitude decrease the amplitude using comma and full stop on your cp board so you can actually reduce it and you can Connected. Once it exceeds, you can actually see the green to red color changing. Once it actually exceeds the required track length, it actually shows it turns into green color. It turns into red color. Sorry. So you can terminate it wherever it is you, know, you wanted to have it. You can visualize these changes and you can maintain the required length and then it can be tuned. 
using Solidus USB. This is one such example for us. Next, one more example I would like to show you quickly. Even though it has taken a little more time, I would like to give you a perfect, perfect uh, no perspective on uh, Solidus PCB. Okay, so how do you actually? I was you know, uh, telling you about uh, the rigid flex PCBs. How do we actually do the rigid flex PCB? I will just quickly show you how to actually set up that particular uh, you know, rigid parameters of the bend radiuses of, of a flexible bolt on Solidus PCB. So this is one such example. So where you can actually see it, I, I'm going to the bolt mode and I'm going to fix it here in the bolt mode. So I have a design. And then I have a rigid and flex, so I can add a uh, no define a split plane. I can define the bending line. I can define the delivery split line. So all these parameters I can do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check the bend angle, radiuses, and affected area rates. Before that, what was the shape actually? So let me just show you before adding any change. How does this particular rigid flex PCB look like? I'm going to the 3D PCB visualization mode. So this is a rigid flex PCB using SolidWorks PCB. You can actually see there are like four rigid boards have been connected with the three flexible boards, right? One, two, three. So if I use a button, let me just minimize this a little bit, right? If I use, yeah, with a shortcut of uh, no uh, five. I can easily bend. I can rebend it, make it the original shape. I can bend it again, right? So it is not completely closed. If you see it, this particular board has not been completely closed like a rectangular box. So there is something on the bend angle which need to be defined on this particular board at the rigid board part in this part, right? So let us go back and go to the board fixation mode. In the board profile mode so in this area it is not able to close it completely because it is the band angle which is not allowing them to add it right let me just add it here so this is going to the fixed wheel board give me a second yeah so here the band angle i'm going to define as 90 degrees and Bend radiuses, I'll just go with as 225 mils. I'll say okay on this. So I've just made you can actually see the change here. Now the bend radius has been increased. The bend angle also need to be increased when we, we use the flexible board mode in 3D visualization. Let come let me come back to the 2D and go to the 3D visualization from here. And now let me now you can see the board. Has been flexibly folded to have a flexible board PCB. So you can you you might be having a different boards. Two or three boards need to be connected together with a flexible PCB. And want to visualize that once these PCBs and the rigid rigid and then flexible PCBs are part of this, how do we actually look like inside the enclosure? So all these things can be visualized using Solidus PCB. This the same board can be pushed back to the 3D and visualize inside mechanical enclosure also as a way i have shown it in the other example right so this is how basically you can you can unfold it you can fold it again n number of times using sort of specific this is actually an awesome tool where you can visualize everything inside your uh, no enclosure or the product how it looks like right okay so one more important uh, you know aspect of sort of specific capabilities I'm broadly giving the capabilities. There are enormous other things which are associated inside, so I can't address everything inside. So I'm just giving the, the gist of Solaris PCB here. So let me take you through a quick example of uh, uh, no, uh, what simulation capabilities Solaris PCB have. So Solaris PCB can do operating point analysis, transient analysis, DC sweep analysis. AC sweep analysis, similarly noise, pole, transfer function, temperature sweep, parameter sweep, Monte Carlo analysis, and you, we know that Monte Carlo analysis is a tolerance analysis, right? So, so let me just quickly um, put it to the default condition. If I don't want default condition, you can always change these particular aspects of it. Currently, I'm just putting in the default configurations. 
where the transient top stop time is 500 microseconds transient step time is 2 microseconds and transient maximum step time is 2 microseconds similarly the dc sweep analysis i am going to choose v1 as a primary source why i have chosen because you can actually see the primary source in this particular this amplifier is v1 only so that is the reason i have chosen v1 if you have vcc or vss is the primary source you can always choose this you can also find the vcc in vss in the circuit diagram here right so you can choose what is the primary stop what is the primary stop what is the step sequence the range is actually 50 to 500 and the primary step is going to be 10 each time it is actually incremental value of 10 here similarly i have set up for the monte carlo analysis also being a tolerance analysis so i can observe what happens if i am using a resistor which is having a one kilo ohm or a two kilo ohm or a three kilo ohm right what happens if i use a resistor as at the input or an output if the resistance value changes with an ambient temperature changes plus minus 10 percent tolerance maybe 900 ohms or 1100 ohms maybe 800 ohms or 1200 ohms plus minus what happens to the output what is the impact on the output so that kind of an analysis which you can see it using tolerance analysis called monte carlo as you know so here actually i am giving uh adding two resistors having same tolerance value and in the gaussian distribution you can see whether the distribution can be uniform worst case or a gaussian distribution so i'm just currently giving a gaussian distribution so that a kind of a bell curve kind of a you know um, output which you can observe it you can still add number of outputs also if you wanted to add for any other the capacitors the resistors are a transistor if you wanted to observe you can still do it right so once i set these parameters on this let me go on and show you quickly when you run the output how does this look like so let me go to the transient analysis so this is an input so i have uh, no the one old is an input how do i know let me just go back here into the simulation model so i'll go to the simulation model and i'm going to see the parameters for the voltage source i can see the ac magnitude is one and ac amplitude is also one so if i make any change here instead of one if i make it as a 10 volts you can actually subsequently see the output voltage changes in the curve in the pdf format so let me just close on this there's a simulation for every model which we are actually seeing it there is a simulation model which is associated on this right so i can actually see the voltage versus time curve here right so if I, I can insert a cursor and then i can see the voltage versus so what is the voltage at this particular point it is triple nine point twenty millivolts nothing but one volt approximately one volt that is an input which i have given um, i mean reducing the the dropouts from here there is a output also associated here you can see it after the dropping signal you can see the output the voltage also associated similarly you can see the ac analysis it's a frequency analysis basically a frequency response in terms of the voltage you can see it here with the different outputs and the dc sweep analysis the dc changes to the input supply dc change formulated in a curve you can see it in the dc sweep analysis let me show you the five output plot here out if you see the monocator analysis i would like to conduct on five iterations right so let me just go and then search and add the monocular analysis output create it add output two output three that means plus minus 10 percent tolerance at a five iterations for a particular component which i'm using what is the component i was using here is the resistor there are two resistors sorry one and output m5 so i'm going to create all these curves once i finish you can see the other curve which you can see the output one two at a different tolerance values the monte carlo analysis basically brings out the output analysis like this right so you you basically can analyze a different types of an analysis using solder pcb and all this comes in a single package right so i've pretty much done with the the presentation probably i'll just come back and then generate the we'll come back to the original uh, give me a second yeah so what we do is we'll go to the outputs yeah 
we'll go to the outputs and what kind of an outputs which we can generate i'm going to the generate outputs bill of material you can configure the bill of material you can uh, create the schematic prints gerber prints gerber extended files you need to check all of them on put the weather in inches and millimeters four is to four micrometers configuration and see drill files let me check in yes i wanted to give it in millimeters currently so i'll just say okay on this i'll say odp plus plus yes i wanted to have all these odp plus files also to exchange i also wanted to have an ipc 2581 configurable files in the latest version of ipc 2581 measuring system might be imperial or metric and i wanted to have a floating point precision i think whoever is involved in the manufacturing sector probably they will be knowing about the floating point precision on the ipc 2581 configuration so you can actually increase this based on your manufacturability general pick and place assembly drawings test points as i said test points you can click assembly test points if you remember i have set the assembly test points also there in the previously so this can be set this can be exported as csv format or text format ipc d356a and these are the options for this board outline can be and then conductor traces can be done and i can keep it on the keyboard layer or you know, any other layer which is required for this i'll say okay on this if i want design rule checks and then algorithm rule checks also i can do export to step and autocad dxf format also i wanted to do it so i can output as an output job here let us say okay on this and once the process is completed you can actually see the list of outputs which will be generated and added to the project tree as well by the time it actually done we will just go and then come back to the final slide of it this is what actually i'm going to show the bill of material fabrication outputs right and this is a collaboration between solidworks pcb and solidworks using a collaborative server called pcb server pcb services and when it comes to the, the licensing part, we have two licenses. One is Solidus PCB licenses, which can be collaborated, as you see on the top side. Solidus PCB with the with, to the SolidWorks, it can collaborate using Solidus PCB services. Similarly, we also have one more solution called PCB connector for Altium Designer. Customers who are using Altium Designer can connect with SolidWorks using SolidWorks connector pcb connector which is an add-in to altium designer that and they can collaborate with using our own server either pcb services or if they have altium vault they can collaborate with the solidworks using altium vault also and these are all the import options we can import pcad protel expedition or cad eagle autodesk pads altium allegro cadster and then different than altium files also from this Similarly, inspection and manufacturing quality, we can produce a copper layer, solder masks, component seal screens, solder paste layers, PCB outline, Gerber files, RS274X, extended format, ASCII drill file formats with tool codes, decimal resolution formats, PCB thicknesses can be defined, ink color solder mask, IPC assembly test point formats, and other fabrication assembly formats. As I said, we have two licenses, one is Solidus PCB and one is also PCB connector. PCB connector is only for Solidus PCB is a standalone. It can work without SolidWorks Mechanical CAD also. SolidWorks PCB is a standalone solution. Doesn't require SolidWorks to operate on your machine or different machine. But if you wanted to produce a product and wanted to collaborate, wanted to check on the mechanical interference, fitment, PCB fit, you know, fit and uh, form factors, yes, you can collaborate well if you have SolidWorks Mechanical CAD also. SolidWorks PCB connector is an add-on to Altium Designer. So customers who are using Altium Designer and SolidWorks Mechanical CAD, they can buy PCB connector as an add-in and started collaborating. There are two product, two licenses for us. And these are all the typical applications wherein uh, no, SolidWorks PCB application can be used. And this is an ecosystem. Before coming to the ecosystem, let me just go back. Whether all the outputs have been generated, yes. All the outputs generated, you can see the, the test point window also, which has been generated based on uh, the test point which we have given and the test point placed. So you can actually see, currently we have not placed much, but it can be generated. Bill of material, this is the format of the bill of material which we have used 
component, description, designators, footprint, library reference, and how many quantity, right? Similarly, the NC drill files, Gerber files, sorry, AutoCAD DXF files, Gerber files, Gerber extended format. You can see the Gerber extended, like this is copper signal bottom layer, copper signal top layer, legend layer, keyboard layer, mechanical layer, solder paste layer, patch layer, solder mask layer, so all the different layers. ODB++, if you wanted to exchange information with anybody, pick and place, export to step, other file formats, and then IPC2 file formats. So all the required fabrication and manufacturing uh, uh, no, outputs can be produced using SOLIDWORKS PCB, right? So SOLIDWORKS is a one-stop solution for uh, no, all your industry needs or a product needs, I can say. So we have mechanical CAD systems, electrical design tools, and, and uh, electronic design tools, simulation tools, inspection tools, CAD tools. Um, we also have a you know, model-based definition tools where uh, you don't need to produce, uh, you can produce a drawing without having a, a dimensionless drawing. So if it's 3D model, you can actually produce the manufacturing drawings. Draft site for the 2D drawings, composer for the technical documentation, Excel is uh, for search tool, and then PDM for the data management, and solidus manage e drawings for references, visualize, and other things. Okay, so we have come to an end of our session. So I'm uh, thanks for your patience, and a lot of guys are still there. Uh, even though you have taken a little more time, uh, but I wanted to give a gist of what are the different capabilities uh, of solidus PCB so that it can help you. Our solution can help you to you know, make your product better. So I'm taking the questions now. So if you have any questions uh, for the participants, I would like to answer now. So let me just make it here. Okay, so somebody is asking, please go slow. Actually, I'm delaying a lot, so I'm just you know, forwarding. So anyone who's having your questions, please, you can ask it now because I'm pretty much done. If you have any specific questions, I would like to show or I can answer it. You can type it on the questions window. Maybe I can wait for maybe one more minute. If you have questions, I mean, you can always you know, reach out to our uh, you know, um, resellers also. Um, I mean, if you have any further questions other than if you're not able to write it here due to time, uh, no labs and all, you can always reach out to uh, you know, to the address below, which is uh, marketing at rate beacon dash india.com. Um, so that our guys can, our resellers guys can you know, help you out on this. Okay, Mr. Swaroop Kumar Samal, uh, he's asking, I'm already using Alkium, whether I will uh, buy again. No, no, sir. Uh, SolidWorks PCB is a, is a specific tool and it's an agreement between Alkium and the SolidWorks PCB. We have not acquired Alkium so that you don't need to you know, come back to us on the, if you wanted to buy Alkium. But the solution what we have, if you have a collaboration issue, you are using Alkium and you want to collaborate with a mechanical guy like SolidWorks, and you have uh, the collaboration issues associated with it, then we have a solution called PCB connector. You don't need to buy an Altium again, but you can buy PCB connector from SolidWorks PCB, I mean SolidWorks resellers, so that you can, if you have SolidWorks uh, no, in your organization, you can collaborate the way I have shown with Altium. You don't need to change Altium, provided your Altium version need to be checked. I hope I have answered your question, sir. Yeah. Any other questions? I'll wait here for one more minute. Yeah. Can thermal analysis of assembled PC be done in the same module? Uh, this is asked by Mr. Sudhir Sambri. Um, currently, no, sir. So we cannot do the thermal analysis here, but we have a tool. Let me just show you here. So this is an output, this is a PCB, right? This is a PCB, which is a part of mechanical CAD. This PCB can be subjected to a simulation solution. We have one more module called solid simulation. So in that, we have electronic cooling module, which can very well test the thermal analysis of the board 
which can test the air flow, right? And where exactly the the components have been distributed, how densely the uh, the PCB board has been populated, how the heat curve can be generated, heat plot can be generated, and how the air ventilation can be given inside that. So this is basically this can be done. That means every solution from SolidWorks is actually an input to the other solution. So this board from SolidWorks PCB can be an input to SolidWorks simulation, but simulation is a specific module which you need to buy to do the thermal analysis. I hope I have answered the question, Mr. Sudhir. You can do it, but you need to buy a simulation module. Yeah, so I will wait for maybe another one minute. So uh, I request Charles the participant, if you have any question, probably I'm ready to answer here. If you have further questions, you can always uh, reach out. Marketing at the rate beacon dash india.com. Okay, uh, it seems uh, no, not much questions at this moment, uh, uh, but okay, probably you can always reach out as I said, uh, our marketing this particular address at any time. You can write to them and then they will assist you, you know, for the processing and then make you understand if you wanted to have you know, anything on this. Let me just close my session with uh, the final uh, no, uh, poll, poll question. Let me just add the final question. So Thanks for attending the webinar. So are you interested in our collaborative solution? This is the final poll question. If yes, then what's your plan? So I request all the participants to you know, give your voting on this. If you are interested and you can choose the choices here. Okay, I'm going to you know, close this session. Thanks for your feedback. I'm going to close this. Okay, so thanks for your time. Uh, even though it has taken a little more time, uh, but I, I I hope I make sense of you know, giving the gist of SOLIDWORKS PCB and it is going to be useful for you in your future references. Uh, please keep in touch with our marketing and uh, you know, the resellers. They can help you out further. You no, know, on uh, further to understand, make you understand the SOLIDWORKS PCB too. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>